Oh, my Lord. Hmm. You know, there was a match years ago with John Cena and Randy Orton, I believe. And uh, it may have actually been a strap match. But I think it was a match involving kendo sticks. But it was it was Randy Orton beating the shit out of John Cena. I think it was with a kendo stick. I think it's the one he was like tied to the post. Yeah, it was like 2009 uh, or something. He was taking a kendo stick straight to the abs. And yes. he gave this fucker the beating like it was the most brutal, violent beating. And I may have to go watch it again because I think that like Brian Danielson must have watched that match and went, come on. And you know this Danielson fella? He's a, he's a sweet person, nice guy. <laughs> mm-hmm. And an absolute total psychopath. He is a friendly man, a loyal man, a creative man, an intelligent man, and a sadistic, cruel, evil son of a bitch. Somebody, all true. Somebody should have called the police during this match, I'm Jesus afraid. Jesus Christ. Somebody actually should have literally called the police and had them show up at the building to make sure that what we were watching was legal. Because an international court would have taken Brian Danielson and put him away somewhere. This match was a war crime. And I mean that in the he, best possible way. Absolutely. I mean, first off, he's got a broken fucking arm. Yeah. He's not supposed to be back for a while. He's got a giant cast on. And I thought, okay, well, you know, he got a bad arm. So, you know, put the strap on the cast so you don't use the arm at all. It's just what's connecting you guys. Now he puts it on the other arm. And then he works his entire match. And, you know, early on, I'm watching it going, okay, well, this is, you know, fair, fairly safe. Ricky jumps him, and there was one thing that kept this from being 44 stars, and that is at the beginning, they're supposed to put the strap on, but Ricky refuses to put on the strap. He then goes and gets a weight belt, and he straps him with a different strap. Well, no, 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 no. He used no, that's the, exactly what happened. He used the buckle of the weight belt to bust Brian Anderson open. Yes, but he was also whipping him with it. He did do that too. Yes, but, the, but anyway, but the key is, but the key is, Danielson was not expecting this because he wasn't strapped yet. It was an ambush on Stark's Stark part. Sure, I don't know where the weight belt came from. I don't know why a weight belt had to be used. Maybe there's maybe there was a different object that could have been used to make more sense there, but it made sense. So for a while, he beats him up. Brian's bleeding. I'm watching this and I'm like, okay, well, you know, he's beating the guy up. You don't have to do much. Just have to sell. His arm is in fine shape. And then finally. Ricky goes up top and Brian crotches him. And then Brian folds up that fucking strap. And he gives it a good look. And then he just fucking rears back. And he strapped this poor motherfucker so hard that like, you know, hydrophones at the bottom of the fucking ocean picked up this noise. And everyone in the audience screams. Like... You remember that David Flair Chris Benoit match where Benoit finally hit him with that one chop and you can they they filmed it in such a way that you could see like 40 rows up and grown men all of a sudden they put their hands and they click and they were like so scared about what happened that's what happened here with one but one was not enough for Brian Danielson oh no you know, he's you, the evil son of a bitch you know they say like you know don't do too many do fewer so you can get the most out of him. Huh, is that what they say? Not, not. Brian wasn't there for that lesson in wrestling school. <laughs> Sean didn't too. teach him that. He fucking whipped him and whipped him and whipped him and whipped him. And he fucking whipped him as hard as he fucking could. He did not hold back at all. God, no. And he beat this guy literally to the point that like it might have been a, a crime. There were times in this match I suspected Ricky Starks was going to submit to a beating. I thought he was going to just cry. <laughs> I thought I thought his mother might show up. Like this was so horrible, the beating that Brian Danielson gave this poor man. And then, you know, then somehow I don't even know how. I mean, maybe Brian got hit by lightning at some point, but Ricky got some more heat somehow. And then, you know, old uh What's his name? Big Bill jumps up on the apron. So Ricky Steamboat takes him out. But then uh, Ricky takes a bump. Thankfully, he got back up. And then Brian throws him back to the ring. Ricky gives him a spear. And then he goes for the finish. But uh, Brian hits the knee. Ricky kicks out. Brian puts him in the label lock. Ricky won't quit, quit. And so Brian then wraps a leather strap around this guy's neck. And he yanks at his neck. He hangs him in the ring. 
and he kills him, and he wins. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. That's what happened. Ricky Starks' face turned red and then purple, and he blacked out because he was choked unconscious. And not like, not a, a, an air choke, not a blood choke. Oh my god. Is Bright aware that this was unkind? <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is not No pacifism. kindness was shown at any point during this match. No, this is not. I'm not even sure that kindness was shown to the fans. No. This because is, kindness was not shown to me. This like, is, I enjoyed this, but I also felt like, you know, I should help. It was harrowing to watch. Yes. It was, it, it, we, we endured it. It was. Yes, I, 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 it was more than uncomfortable, and I loved it. I loved every second of it. <laughs> so that's pretty much that. A few details. The person uh, goes, is Ricky more over than when the night started? It doesn't matter. He's dead. Yes. We're never going to see him again. So they are... Uh, uh, Danielson is still using Final Countdown in his music. I want to point that out. Now, I thought the start to this match was brilliant. Because, as you mentioned, Danielson's coming back from a broken arm. There's still a steel rod in there. It's all taped up. And in all likelihood, this was never actually their plan. Because they were building to Punk and Starks having a blow-off here. That didn't happen. And conveniently, they had a guy with the same nickname as Ricky Steamboat to conveniently plug into the storyline. And, and he was able to come in and go. But he still had a broken arm. And so I wasn't sure what he'd be able to do. And so when Starks stalls a little bit... And uh, is running away, and then jumps in before the strap is on, and then busts him, busts him open. And he's bleeding. I thought, okay, now Danielson doesn't have to actually do a match. He can just lie there and sell the entire time, do whatever they're doing for the comeback, and do the finish, and it's, it'll be good. But he, you know, doesn't have to. Little did I know. Now, the match continues. Danielson is bleeding everywhere, selling like crazy. Curry Ed, who actually works in a correctional facility. Yes. States that this was one count of aggravated assault and one count of attempted second degree murder. Yeah. <laughs> that checks. Uh, I'm no legal expert. I'm not in the law enforcement field, but that 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 fits what I saw. So Steve was on commentary. And he didn't say a ton, but he always said the right thing. And uh Danielson's down in, in a bloody heap. I mean, he's like eyes are glazed over. And Steve says, you know. It's one thing to feel your own blood, and it's a it's another thing to see your own blood. But when you can taste your own blood, that just flips a switch inside you. And I don't know how much they work together. This is just a great chemistry or great coincidence, but that's the exact moment when Danielson fired up and made his comeback. And then he starts to strap this motherfucker. I strap him. I strap him. I strap him. Yanks him outside, pulls him into the post, and Ricky is bloody now, and straps him, and straps him, and straps him. They get back in the ring, and Danielson is doing the running corner kicks, and Starks fires out with a lariat, and they're like the longest double down of all time, and I don't blame them one bit. I would still be down in the ring if I were them, especially if I was Starks. So they get up, and they begin to trade straps to the face. They were strapping each other in the face over and over again. And after a while, Danielson decides to stop selling. He's no selling. He's, he's impervious to pain now. And Starks knows he is fucked, but he's still throwing these half-hearted strap shots. And he's trying, but he knows he's going to die. And then he died. He died and died and died. And Big Bill goes after Danielson. Steamboat goes after Big Bill in a great moment. And they, they just they, like, fell down. He didn't really take a bump. But, uh, Danielson does a dive on all the heels. They did some near falls. And he got a near fall with a spear. Tried the Rochambeau. But, uh, and Danielson hit the knee strike, but Starks kicks out. So Danielson says, I'm going to kick his fucking head in. He kicks the man's fucking head in. He gets the bell lock. But here's a point none of the announcers missed. It wasn't working, and also he cannot maintain the grip because he's got a broken arm. <laughs> so that's when he decided to strangle a man and wrap a strap around his neck and pull back on it and hang him until dead. And, uh, and that was that. So we were discussing the build for the show, and it was not the best we ever saw. And uh, was this a show you want to pay money for? Well, if you paid money for the show, you got like double your value based on this match alone. And there was more to come. There was much, much more to come. Nobody gets to complain about the show now. If you bought the show, you got your money's worth. I don't want to hear anything else. This was unreal. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. You have a... 
commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.